One thing you should know about me is that I am terrible at sports. Actually, to a laughable degree. If you gave me a bat or a golf club, I wouldn't know how to hold it. I used to always be the last one standing in dodgeball just because I'd hide in the back and avoid throwing anything. And if I ever managed to hit a single pin in bowling, they'd have to make a national holiday out of it. However, I do happen to be an expert when it comes to SpongeBob BC bowling. Or not. But speaking of Nickelodeon sports games, they had a whole bunch of these made for their Stars series. There are actually quite a lot of these, covering a vast array of different sporting activities. So thanks to Nickelodeon, I can finally play a sport without becoming the laughingstock of the whole state. Just as long as there aren't any press reporters watching me this time. Let's start with baseball stars. Back in grade school, I used to frustrate my gym teachers because I could never hit a single ball. Then when I would hit one, it would fly beyond Earth's atmosphere and eventually wind up in a picture sent by Voyager 2. So let's check this out. We have a few things to address here, so let's start with tournament mode. Our starting cast includes Leo and Donnie from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Korra from Legend of Korra, Fee from Harvey Beaks, Sanjay from Sanjay and Craig, one half of the breadwinners, and a sponge. You unlock the others by playing a certain number of stages with their series partner. You can unlock the other two Ninja Turtles, Patrick, Craig, the other breadwinner, Fu, and Asami. Each character belongs to a certain team, such as the Bikini Bottom Barnacles, the Nunchuck All-Stars, the Quasi Breadheads, Tree Bark Trouble, Hot Wings Warriors, and Republic City Rebels. So this is what the game looks like. Wow, baseball sure looks different from how I remember it. Someone tell all those MLB teams they're playing it wrong. You click and drag the mouse in a certain direction, then click to swing the bat at the right time to hit the ball. Then the ball flies through an obstacle course, smashing stuff and collecting items such as stars to gain points. Once you collect a certain number of points, you clear a level, but don't run out of balls before you can. The stages are filled with obstacles like this one toilet that launches the ball, or these catchers that can catch it. Oh come on, I did that super cool move just to lose. The pitcher might also throw a slime ball, which can be more challenging to hit than a regular one. After every stage, there's a chance that the game will give you a code. They can be used to unlock certain cheats that will make the game easier, harder, or just more interesting. Predictably, the stages in tournament mode get harder as they go, so the one that always gives you a good shot is a good cheat to try. Over time, you fill up your star meter, which can give you a perfect shot with a unique animation depending on your character. Even if it isn't the most traditional way to play baseball, this game is a lot of fun. I enjoy seeing all the different obstacles I can send my ball through. It's even better when you launch it into space and bring down the moon. Somewhere I just know Link is crying about this. At the same time, this game is kind of hard. It took me an embarrassingly long time to beat the final stage. My only major criticism is that after you send your ball flying, once it's done basically everything it can do, you're given the option to skip to your next swing so you don't have to watch the animation of it doing basically nothing. However, sometimes I still get points even after the skip option appears, so it's a good thing I held off from clicking it. Also, sometimes it doesn't appear and leaves you stuck in limbo if your ball isn't in an ideal position. Like this. This wasn't very common, so it didn't entirely ruin the game, but I was struggling with this stage and I had enough points to win, so you can imagine I wasn't thrilled about having to redo it. But there's no crying in baseball. The other mode you can play is Derby Mode. In this, you get added challenges such as a time limit, infinite balls, and a ball that can explode on command. It isn't super challenging, just kind of fun to mess around in. Oh, and one more thing. Godzilla back here is always laying waste to the city. I guess the best time to do it is when everyone's busy watching me absolutely kill it in this baseball game. Overall, this is good. I really enjoyed this. It's a lot of fun to throw the balls through the obstacle courses and see how much destruction you can cause. Definitely worth giving a go. So now let's move on to another popular sport, basketball. Anyone here remember Nicktoons basketball? Anyone? Hello? Now as we can see here... Oh no. They went and did it again. Listen, Nickelodeon. I don't know what you think this is, but you know how the laws of science work. Every last person on Earth knows that pig, goat, banana, and cricket are inseparable. Just like in Super Brawl 4, and just like in Block Party 2, I see a pig and a goat, but not a banana or a cricket. This is unforgivable. The game is ruined, we can't play it. So anyway, we have all the same characters from baseball, but the breadwinners are gone. They won't be winning any bread in this game. In a later update, they added Lincoln and Lynn from the Loud House. Nice to see that these were frequently updated. Nickelodeon developers were good about that. 
Also, the team names are all the same as they were in baseball. That's a nice bit of continuity, acknowledging that they're all part of the same series. So now let's get on with the gameplay. Your character is on a team of two with the other person from their show. You move around the court, trying to steal the ball and make a shot in the enemy's hoop. Right away, I love the duo mechanic but this has got to be the most brutal basketball game ever played. You viciously attack the other players to either keep them back or steal the ball from them. The coaches are too amused to do anything about it. Ha, just let those Nicktoons be Nicktoons. You can collect power-ups and even perform special moves with unique animations. Later stages of tournament mode add obstacles such as platforms you have to jump on and moving hoops. Also, no, Nickelodeon, I'm not going to get your sports app. I found this game fairly easy, but I really enjoyed it. I tend to like games where my favorite characters team up. Maybe that's why I've always liked Sonic Heroes so much. But this must have been a popular one because it received not one, but two sequels. Basketball Stars 2 heavily expanded on this and included the option for a one versus one match. We lost Pig and Goat, but you know what? Maybe it's for the best. You can't have apple pie without the apples, so maybe it's best to just not have the pie. Sanjay and Craig are also gone, along with the Korra characters. In their place, we have Kid Danger and Captain Man from Henry Danger. The cast took a little beating, but the different game modes might make up for it. This time, you're outside and more or less doing the same stuff you did in the first one. All-Stars mode is great because you can select up to four characters to compete in one of three unique spins on basketball. My favorite is Horse where the player makes a shot and the others have to try and make the shot by stepping on the same space as the first one did. You have to keep this pattern up five times to spell the word horse. Another mode is three-point shootout, where everyone has to shoot a series of baskets by landing a cursor in a tiny green space in a bar moving at the bottom of the screen. Horse has the same mechanic. There's also dunk challenge, where you have to make your way through obstacle courses to land a series of dunks. This game also has voice clips whenever the characters do something. Ooh, make a mess! Wow! Oh, some people? Again, I like this one. Horse might be my favorite part of it, but I also enjoy whenever I have to mess around with platforms to make a shot. It's a unique way to play basketball. I'll be joining the NBA in no time. So now let's check out Basketball 3, and... Well, those are some unique character sprites. This is the smallest cast yet, and it seems to be a trend with Nickelodeon website games where they downsize the cast with every new release in a series. Not entirely sure why, maybe they just don't get updated enough. This time, we have Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks and Red Ranger from Power Rangers, but we lost Fee and Foo and the Ninja Turtles. Maybe they couldn't fit in those really big shoes. The game also starts abruptly with a tutorial mode after you click on a character. You bounce around in your shoe and jump into trampolines to fling yourself throughout the court. This is... amusing. I prefer the first two, but there's a definite uniqueness to this one. Once you clear the tutorial, without warning, they throw you into this seemingly multiplayer mode. I don't believe it's actually multiplayer. Nickelodeon games will often use existing profiles and pit you up against them, but just have them be controlled by an AI. Still, the AI sucks because I absolutely obliterate it every time. This is the only mode in the entire game, so it's kind of a step back from its predecessors. But that's okay, because we still have a ton of games left to get through. Now let's jump into one of the more popular sports, football. No, not that kind of football. The American kind that's actually more similar to rugby than soccer. They hardly even use their feet, but they do have a trillion intricate rules that make it hard for me to understand anything anyone is saying whenever I try to watch it. So get your drafts ready, because we have quite the cast this time around. This is another duo game. We have Spongebob and Sandy instead of Patrick this time. Football sounded too complicated for him to understand. But we also have a new character named Bella from Bella and the Bulldogs, along with the Turtles, Sanjay and Craig, and the Breadwinners. Bella and the Bulldogs was an extremely short-lived show, only airing for a year, but it was about a football team, so it's appropriate they'd include the main character from it. Every character has their own stats, some excelling in speed, endurance, or power. I like this because it adds more of a reason to play as certain characters aside from just picking the ones you like. There's a trials mode which gives you three challenges to test out the different aspects of the game. In run mode, you run to make a touchdown while collecting power-ups and avoiding the enemy team members. You can also dash, and I tend to spam this move quite a bit. You're also being chased, so this game includes an unusual feature to deal with your pursuers. You can actually fart to make them back off. <laughs> I never end up needing to use it either. The enemy team members are really slow and never able to catch me. In out of my way mode, you have to deliberately dash through the enemy team members that are blocking you. And in give me a hug, you have to chase someone who's trying to make a touchdown so you can tackle them. Again, it's really easy. 
So now that we've tried out every different aspect of tournament mode, let's do the actual thing. You flip a coin to determine if you're on offense or defense, then you either run to make a touchdown or try to tackle an opposing team member. Obstacles from each of the shows can also appear in the field to knock you over. Again, the game isn't too hard, and you can make any character work no matter what their stats are. Not bad. Like with basketball, this one also has a sequel. It's a lot more complicated and even more similar to actual football. They got rid of Sandy and added Patrick. They only have two Ninja Turtles this time, and they also have Fairly Odd Parents reps. Timmy and... Who's this? Just kidding, I know who Chloe is. The game received frequent updates, so Kid Danger and Captain Man were later added, as were Lincoln and Lynn. Everyone starts with one point for each stat, and you can improve them by winning gear. The gear is unique to whichever character you win it with, so you have to play through everyone to get their own respective unlockables. You run around the field, going over obstacles that hurt, teleport, or speed you up, and you beat up the enemy team members to steal the ball. Then you go for a touchdown. Also, voice clips. Ready, guys? Let's go! I'm ready! This one is bright and colorful, and I like the look of it. Also, we're in space, apparently. I mean, if football games were in space and had green monsters trying to smash the players from under the turf, I'd watch every single match. I also like the random phrases they say before you begin. They can kind of take you by surprise if you aren't expecting them. You have to do a double take when you're hit in the face with purple cashew pie. This is a lot of fun, and it's nice to see what the different obstacles can do to your character. It's also cool to dress them up and improve your stats. There's potential for endless enjoyment here. Now we just need Big Time Rush to perform at the halftime show. So now let's try another sport that almost manages to be just as violent as football. Hockey! Every character has preset stats that you can improve with gear. SpongeBob, Patrick, Timmy, and Chloe are here, and this time we have six Ninja Turtle characters. All four of them, along with April and Casey. Also... Don't say it. Don't say it. God, it's eating away at me. It's nice to be able to customize your characters and see their different special moves in action, too. Um, did I just kill the Crimson Chin? God, I'm so sorry, Timmy. The matches are short, but they can actually be kind of difficult. Some of the special moves are also really fun to see play out. Pig eats a pickle and becomes ginormous. If only it was a banana. If only. SpongeBob can also block a goal with Krabby Patties. Like with the others, I like this one. You can have some long games and customize each character to your liking. Now here's one of my favorites. Not necessarily a traditional sport, but still part of the series. Nick Racing Stars is quite a behemoth of a Flash game. I guess we can call it Nick's car. <laughs> It sounds like some guy named Nick has a car. Once you start, it throws you right into the game without warning. You do a tutorial where you run a track as Spongebob and go over ramps and speed boosts. There are also obstacles such as dirt and tar puddles. The dirt mounds are hard to avoid since you can't jump over them, so sometimes during races you just have to take the hits like a champ. So now look at this gargantuan cast. It was updated over time, so they were able to add a good number of characters. It's also funny how abrasive Spongebob is here. He appeared in more Nick.com games than episodes of the actual show. Spongebob, Patrick, the Turtles, Timmy, Chloe, Kid Danger, Red and Pink Ranger, Lincoln, and Alvin are here. But we have a bunch of new faces, too. Tommy from Rugrats is the most surprising one. It's shocking to see a classic in a sea of modernity. We also have Babe and Kenzie from the Game Shakers, along with two Ninja Turtle villains, Shredder and Tiger Claw, also Snide from Power Rangers. They also decided to kick Lynn out of here and get Lola to be the second Loud House rep this time. One of the best things about this game is the ability to customize your vehicle. Any game that lets me make Snide drive something like this is a masterpiece. It's also amazing that a Flash game with this many characters is fully voiced. They made the most of their budget with this one. The tracks themselves are mostly straightforward, with four different backgrounds to select from. You can have a whole race in the middle of the Loud House. No wonder it's so loud. But I like the nighttime city setting. It's cool to drive over ramps and fly to other rooftops. The vehicle accessories give you improvements to your stats, but in all honesty, I just build whatever I think is funny. The game isn't too hard, but you can have the time of your life with it. I love this one. So now let's get back to your typical sporting games. Let's do football. No, the other football. 
Soccer, as many of you know it as. This time, we have Spongebob and Patrick, the Breadwinners, all four Turtles in April, Korra and Asami, Sanjay and Craig, and a new person, Karai from Ninja Turtles. She makes a very good addition, if you ask me. Matches can either be between teams of two or one-on-one. -on -one. It even has the option for two against one. You kick a ball around the court and even beat up your opponent as you try to land a goal in their net. There are a few special moves too, and while the moves themselves produce the same effects, the animations are different for each character. The ball can also become different things like a disco ball or this little face you can kick around. It probably deserves it. Between every tournament match, you get this minigame where you kick a bunch of balls into falling targets. It's a little challenging to aim it correctly, but it's a fine bonus round. This is pretty good, so let's check out the sequel. This one takes on a more platform jumper approach. You jump across platforms and kick the ball in the goal. You can even do a special kick by holding the button down, but it's risky if your angle isn't perfect. Unfortunately, we lost April, Karai, Korra, Asami, Sanjay, Craig, and the Breadwinners, but we do have a bunch of newcomers. Lincoln and Lynn, Red and Pink Ranger, Babe and Kenzie, Kid Danger and Captain Man, and even Alvin and Brittany. Like with the last one, there are only a few special moves, but the animations are unique to each character. Patrick takes a deep breath to move the ball to him, Alvin sings so loudly it stuns everyone, and Babe summons Sky Whale to freely move around the court. Oh god, one of the players is on a unicorn fish thing and is flying around the arena. So this is pretty good. Now let's move on to tennis stars. I'm something of a tennis expert myself. I always move everyone to tears because of my performance, especially my teammate. Right away, we get jump scared by an announcer voice. To serve, press spacebar, then press it again at the right time to hit the ball over the net. This voice narrates the entire game. Use the arrow keys to move. Fifteen love. It's your turn to serve. So you move around your side of the court, hitting the ball over the net and hitting it when it comes back. You move to the space where the ball is set to land, then you strike. You can even do it at the front of the net for a stronger shot. We also have some good old special moves. The modes include one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, or two on one either side. We have a small cast of SpongeBob and Patrick, Leo and Raphael, Lincoln and Kid Danger, but also Sky Whale and Phoebe from the Thundermans. Unlike in the other games, the teams are randomized. For some reason though, my partner is always selected as SpongeBob. I can't seem to shake this guy wherever I go. Sometimes you get bonuses like rings you can shoot the ball through or a power-up that turns your enemy's turf into cake. Forcing someone to play tennis on cake, could there be anything worse? Speaking of the turf, it can get interesting with every stage. You can have a dance floor, a fairly odd parent styled cloudy floor, or even this digital one. Like with the others, you can have a lot of fun with this. So now let's move on to what might be the most interesting game in the entire series. This one isn't about one sport in particular, but five of them. It's called Summer Sports Stars. In this, you can compete with up to four others in one of five challenges. We have Donnie and Raph, Spongebob and Patrick, Lincoln and Lynn, Kid Danger and Red Ranger, Bella and Alvin. The first stage is acrobatics. You drag the mouse to make your character flip all the way to the finish. They talk to you the whole time. Yeah! That was awesome! Aw, that's gonna come out of my paycheck. What? Thank you very much. I'm never gonna forget this. It's kind of silly, but I like it. Pole vaulting is the hardest. You drag your character and then station the pole so they're able to launch themselves off of it. You can even launch them into space. Maybe they'll see a football game up there. Even if I'm terrible at this and can't get a good height, it's still fun to drag your character around. It's kind of similar to horseback riding, but this one's a real pain. You have to drag your character and horse through a course, of course, but it's really easy to flip it over and struggle to get back up. Reminds me of the game Clop. It's just as hard, too. The next one is swimming, where you drag your character through the most cluttered pool in existence. This one's actually tough because I keep dragging the mouse out of the game screen. Also, ouch, she's dead. The last one is a 100 meter dash on stilts. You drag the stilts to move your character across a field. It seems really hard, but it took me a while to realize I could just move the mouse in a circular formation for the best result. It's easy from there. All of these games are pretty silly, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy them. It's a lot like an old game called Ragdoll Olympics. So overall, I enjoyed every game in this little sports series. While they won't give you a typical sports gaming experience, they're all a ton of fun and worth trying out for yourselves. This little series had a lot of work and detail put into it, making it a really nice experience to play through. I gotta hand it to the developers. I think every single one of these is worth playing for one reason or another. Good job, Nickelodeon. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.